Hello, and welcome to this video presentation, in which we'll introduce the Action Center tab, a feature in Apex SQL Source Control that is used as a communication channel between a versioned database and its respective source control repository. The Action Center tab is the central point of Apex SQL Source Control, where all current differences between a linked database and source control are presented. It is used as a launchpad to commit changes to source control, apply changes from source control to the database, merge and review differences. The Action Center tab can be opened only for databases that are already linked to source control. You can open the Action Center tab in three ways. Select the linked database in the Object Explorer pane and click the Action Center command in the Apex SQL source control toolbar. Right-click a linked database in the Object Explorer pane and from the context menu, click the Action Center command. Select the linked database in the Object Explorer pane and press Control plus Alt plus A on the keyboard. If another database that is not linked to source control is selected in the Object Explorer pane while the Action Center tab is active, the message, the selected database is not under source control, appears in the Action Center tab. If the Action Center tab is open for one of the linked databases, and then the other linked database is selected in the Object Explorer pane, a message appears in the Action Center tab saying, the active database is different. Click to refresh. To see the differences between the newly selected database and source control, the Action Center tab needs to be refreshed, either by clicking the message or by clicking the Refresh button in the upper right corner of the Action Center tab. Let's link one of the databases to subversion source control using the dedicated model. In order to link a database, We'll right-click a database in the Object Explorer pane and from the context menu, select the Link Database to Source Control option. After setting up the connection in the Source Control wizard, we'll click the Finish button. This will open the Action Center tab, where all objects from the chosen database will be listed. Since the initial commit has not been performed and Source Control is empty, all the objects from the linked database will be shown at this point. The upper half of the Action Center tab, where the list of objects is shown, contains several columns. Type, which is the SQL database object type, like table or procedure. Database, which contains the name of an object in a database that differs from the same object on source control. Action, which contains the exact action that will be performed. Possible actions are commit and get. But a separate icon will be shown in case an object is in conflict when using the dedicated model or if Apex SQL Source Control cannot set the proper action automatically for any reason. Repository. This is essentially the same as the database column, but it shows objects in the repository. Schema. Shows the SQL schema for the object. The Action Center tab gives you the possibility to check which objects will be processed. Objects can be checked all at once, one by one, or using the Control and Shift keys. Besides checking specific objects from the list, we can filter objects that will be shown in the Action Center tab using the Filter row. For example, we will filter Tables only and we'll select all tables to be committed to source control. In order to do that, type in the filter row. In the Type column, Table or Pick Table in the drop-down list. As you can see, only tables from the linked database will be shown. In our case, there are 71 tables. The number of listed objects and the number of checked objects can be seen in the upper left corner of the Action Center tab. Let's add another filter for schemas. Type in the filter row in the schemas column, person. Now, in the Action Center tab are listed only the tables with the person schema, which, in our case, are 13 tables. This way, you can filter through all the database or repository objects. 
The bottom part of the Action Center tab shows the differences between the version of an object from a database and source control. To see the differences, select an object in the object list in the upper half of the Action Center tab. In this case, there are no objects in the source control because the initial commit has not been performed yet, and source control is still empty. So let's commit all objects from a database to source control. Check all the objects from the list and click the Apply button. Without comment provided, the information message Provide a comment in order to commit changes will appear. If you do not want to provide a comment for each commit, go to the Apex SQL main menu, Apex SQL Source Control, Options, and from the Action Center tab, uncheck Require Comment and Show Comment Block Options and click the OK button to save changed options. Now, when you click the Apply button, the commit will go without any additional messages. The Action Center tab will refresh, and if there is no difference between a database and source control, the message, Database and Source Control are synced, click to refresh, will be presented in the Action Center tab. Let's make some changes against the database and see how these changes will be shown in the Action Center tab. First, we will add another column to the address table. Then, we will delete the database log table. After all these changes, the message in the Action Center tab will change to Database Changes Detected. Refresh the Action Center tab. Click on the message in the Action Center tab or click the Refresh button. As you can see, now we have only two objects in the Action Center tab because these objects are the only ones with different versions in the database and in source control. In the Action Center tab, you can see which changes are made to the object by selecting the object in the upper half of the Action Center. In the left Differences Preview window will be shown the object version from the database, and in the right Differences Preview window will be shown the object version from Source Control. The differences are highlighted. In our example, the difference for the address table is in one column which we added. For the database log table, the Differences Preview window will show that the object does not exist in the database anymore. And because of that, this window is empty. But its version is still present on Source Control. And in the Repository Preview window, you can see its script. For the database log table, we will change the action from Commit to Source Control to Apply Against a Database. And for the Address table, we will leave the action to Commit to Source Control. To change the type of action which will be performed after the Apply button is clicked, just click on the status icon of the Action column in the row of the object in question. As you can see, the icon for the Action button has changed. And now, when we click on the Apply button, the changes will be applied to source control and against the database. The Undo button is kind of a safety net when it comes to committing changes to source control, but only in the dedicated development model, and only after the initial commit has already been performed. Let's commit all objects to source control. Now, add one column, New Call, to the address table. and refresh the Action Center tab. In the Differences Preview windows, you can see that the only difference is in Added Column. Check the Address table from the list and click the Undo button. In the Undo Changes to Database window, you can see which actions will be performed, a script of this action, and warnings about this action if there are any. Clicking the Apply button, we'll drop the added column New Call from the Address table. After this action is completed, the Address table is no longer on the list in the Action Center tab because its versions in the database and source control are the same now. The Action column of the Action Center tab can show two more statuses, Different Object Status and Conflicted Object Status. These statuses can appear only when databases are linked in the dedicated development model. Let's explain situations when they appear. Let's say you have two identical databases, AW1 and AW2, on the same server 
or on different servers used by two users. But only the AW1 database is linked in the dedicated development model to source control. Now, change the address table in the AW1 database by adding another column. New call 02. And commit that change to source control. When you link the AW2 database to the same source control, the Action Center tab will show different object statuses for the address table. This happens when the object versions in the database and on source control are not the same. And the add-in does not have any information about the previous state of the object to provide sufficient context. This status must be resolved, though, before you can apply the changes. You can resolve the status by clicking on it and in the Action column and change it to either Commit to Source Control or Apply Against a Database. We will choose Apply Against a Database because we want to preserve the change. The conflicted object status appears if an object was changed without previously getting the latest state from Source Control. We will use the same databases, AW1 and AW2 which are identical and already linked to the same source control in the dedicated development model. Now, let's add one column, Test, to the table database log in the AW2 database and commit changes to source control. In the AW1 database, add one column, Test02 to the same table database log and refresh the Action Center tab. The Action column of the Action Center tab now indicates that there is a conflict with the table database log. This means that changes are found in both versions of the object, in the database and in source control. In the Difference Preview window, the conflicted rows will be highlighted. The add-in gives three types of resolutions for these types of conflicts. Keep local, take from the repository, and merge. We will choose the Take from the repository option from the Resolve Conflict drop-down list and click the Confirm button. As you can see, after we choose Resolve the Conflict, the object status changed. Now we can click the Apply button. The Action Center tab information specifically the status bar section, contains the name of the SQL Server instance and of the database which is linked to source control. It also contains details on development model, source control system, and the URL of the repository. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit apexsql.com.